All right. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining me on this great episode of your favorite political talk show, The Truth with Ben Jokes. Now, hardship in Nigeria continues to bite harder and the people clearly are not going to have things easier anytime soon. As a matter of fact, if the prediction of the United Nations food program is anything to go by, we expect the situation to get worse as we approach the lean season, which is towards the end of August all through to October. It is expected that during this period, Nigeria, especially northern Nigeria, will experience starvation and famine. That, that was what the United Nations Food Program said. They said unless something drastic is done by the federal government, this would come to pass. And one would expect massive steps towards food production after that revelation by the United Nations. But the federal government's most drastic moves since that announcement was made were the acquisition of an A330 private jet for over 150 billion naira, the release of 90 billion naira for Hajj subsidy, 21 billion naira VP Lodge, and a host of other needless expenditures. And Nigerians from North, South, East, and West have been told to be patient that they will soon enjoy this administration. But many Nigerians are sick of the summons and now want to embark on a nationwide protest and to feel that Financial Times just hours ago released an article castigating the Tinubu administration with some very strong allegations. Before I show you what they said and how Nigerians reacted, let me quickly show you this video. You know, when we tell you that the people in government don't see Nigerians as normal human beings, they don't see government money as money that should be used for the people. They see themselves as winners, as everybody's rushing for the money and they have won by being in those positions. So they don't see themselves as being responsible to the people in any way. Listen to God's will Akpabio in this video, saying right there on the floor of the Senate that government money is not supposed to be used for Nigerian citizens. And Senator Natasha had to get up to correct him. Watch the video. The Cairo fire outbreak and the need for safer public places. I urge the FCDA and Abuja Municipal Area Council to offer the shops when rebuilt to the victims at a subsidized and affordable rate in order not to disenfranchise the original owners of the shops. I so submit. So why do you use government money? to build community market, maintain the status, and hand over to the community. So what I'm saying in this sense is that the prayer is faulty, but is anybody who wants to second this prayer? Yes, sir, I stand and I speak to second the prayer as amended by Senator Eriti Kingibe. Uh, if your question has to do with the disbursement or the utilization of government funds in rebuilding a community market, sir, the people are the government, the communities are the government. So it's like the people using their money to their own advantage. So I stand to second the motion as amended by Senator Ritikindivisa. You heard that. How could any normal human being reject that motion that was raised by Senator Ritikindivisa? Karu market caught fire and burnt down. Now the government is moving to fix the markets. And she's saying after all the shops are fixed, the original owners should have the first right of refusal. They should offer the shops to the original owners first at very subsidized rates so that they can take the shops back and continue with their businesses. That is what Akpabio is opposing. That how can you use government money to build shops for people? So what should they do? You want them to build those shops, then leave them for the wives of House of Rep members and senators to come and buy the shops over so that they will start giving them out at very exorbitant rates. Then the people who sell will now transfer the whole shop rent on the goods and services. These are the kind of things messing up our society. And Senator Natasha of Kogi State had to stand up to correct a whole so-called Senate president. And to be candid, it's not even about correction because it wasn't a mistake. It is just who Akpabio is. He has no regard for the people. And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. Olami Lake on here says, This Akpabio is one of the worst Senate president Nigeria has ever had. He hates to hear women speak. The other day, he told Natasha to keep quiet 
that they are not in the nightclub. I guess this is payback. Mm. Natasha is paying him back for trying to embarrass her. And this tweet by Babs says, Nice one. My only problem is the use of the sir almost every time for that shameless thief. Mm -mm. And this tweet by Typical Ibadan says, 90% of these politicians don't see the people as the government. They see themselves as the owner of the political seat they occupy. That is it. And it behoves the people to say no because these guys will never change. If they are doing something and there are no consequences for their actions, how would they ever think of changing? And this tweet here says, but you are using government money to build Ruga and always support Fulani headsmen and Niger Delta militia with billions and trillions. But you can't rebuild markets for your people that pay taxes on their businesses. Shame on you, Nigerian Senate. And they also use government money to buy themselves SUVs and build themselves edifice mansions. But it is not for the people. What a shame. Now, let us look at what the England or the English newspaper, Financial Times, had to say about this administration. Look at how the papers reported it. Tinubu's source of wealth unknown, his government looting billions from oil theft as hunger plagues Nigerians, Financial Times. The Financial Times has raised significant concerns about Tinubu's unexplained source of wealth, accusing his administration of looting billions through oil theft while millions of Nigerians suffer from hunger and poverty. In an editorial published on Wednesday, the Financial Times criticizes Mr. Tinubu's disjointed policies, which have exacerbated the plight of tens of millions of Nigerians, pushing them further into poverty. Corruption must be confronted. It does not help that Tinubu's own substantial wealth remains obscure, nor that his Minister for Poverty Alleviation was suspended over allegations of funds diversion, which she denies, the Financial Times argued. It added, it also does not assist that the state is implicated in the large-scale theft of oil, depriving the nation's coffers of billions of dollars. Tinubu must utilize all his political acumen to stem this theft. According to Financial Times, instead of handing out bags of rice to Nigerians, what is needed is direct cash payment to people's phones, the technology for which exists, and in the longer term, a proper safety net which the state lacks the capacity or probity to administer. In 2022, Gazette published a series of damning reports on how Mr. Tinubu, who was Lagos governor between 1999 to 2008, corruptly enriched himself through questionable Lagos tax administration via Alpha Beta. The newspaper also undercovered how Mr. Tinubu's Alpha Beta siphoned billions to shell companies. Financial Time Critic follows the anniversary of Mr. Tinubu's first year in office on 29th May. Previously, the New York Times had similarly reported on how Mr. Tinubu's policies have deepened poverty in Nigeria. You heard that. Now, Financial Times is not an obedient newspaper. Before Tinubu's spokespersons will respond by saying Peter will be supporters are the ones behind it. Because Bayer Onanuga wrote a long epistle hours ago explaining how Peter Obi is the brain behind the forthcoming protest and how he should be responsible for the damages that will follow. It is this same Bayer Onanuga that said that Peter Obi does not have any, a, 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 any recognition in northern Nigeria. Meanwhile, northern Nigeria is the, is the region that is gearing up most for this protest. And you are turning around to say that Peter Obi is the brain of the protest. What a stupid contradiction by an old fool. Now, Financial Times, an English newspaper, is saying the government is complicit in billions of dollars oil theft. Financial Times has published Nigeria's poverty under Tinubu to the whole world. His policies have been scrutinized and found to be doing only harm to the economy of this country. Tell me, the chief propagandist of Villa, is Financial Times an obedient newspaper? And look at how Nigerians reacted. Look at some of the tweet reactions. This tweet here by Oluwatosin says, Bayo should come and write epistles to defend his ogre. That is it. That's what he does best. And this tweet by Antenna says, APC is sinking this country every day. Will Nigeria ever come out of this? Well, that's a very big question. 
and honestly i can't say whether we will or not i only know the only way we can come out of it is to get rid of the apc and this tweet here says nothing new about this all western government secret services have his file online terrorist yoruba ronu apc nazi movement oh yeah come and defend your leader and he will chai and this tweet here sarcastically says tinubu is the greatest president nigeria ever had man of honesty man of credibility man of unquestionable repute he made lagos great and he's making nigeria great look at how he has eradicated poverty and terrorism indeed tinubu is god sent oh what a sarcasm well it is what it is akpabio doesn't think government money should be used for the people of this country sadly this is the mentality of all apc members they believe that government money is theirs and the people are just privileged beneficiaries it is not our right so when they do little things when they share two three moodles of rice or they tar two kilometers of road they want the people to be jumping up and rejoicing that they have done something big financial times has circulated that disgraceful article all around the world and i wonder why they dropped it at a time like this could it be that they wanted to further motivate nigerians to protest well time will tell but whether nigerians protest or not one thing is sure we can never have the kind of country we want if we don't react to the misbehaviors of politicians as far as they know that there won't be consequences for their actions they will continue on this path if nigerians want to take their country back they know what to do but until then make i still enter town <laughs> make i go get some obonga political news where we go like why because time because of now now i day here so don't go away don't go away.